Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm recording this in an ice storm. Hello, so I got a microphone, um, as you can tell, and I'm not sure if I like the way I sound with the microphone. Can you let me know, one, is the sound quality better or is it worse? Two, do we like it? Do I stop using it? Do I figure out where to hold it so it sounds a lot better? Let me know. That's right. It is sometime in November in Canada and there's a nice storm going on. So I would like to record this and record the ending of this vlog before the power goes off, which inevitably will happen. But in this vlog, I will be reading BTS Beyond the Story, the 10 year record of BTS. And I'm very excited <laughs> for you guys to watch this video because as you can see, I took my job reading this book very seriously. This vlog might not be for you, but it is specifically for me and my friend Ness. And whoever wants to benefit from watching this video can. I just changed the angle a little bit. I hope this works a bit better. Before we get into the vlog, I did want to give some little facts about me and my relationship and love for BTS. I have been an ARMY for about almost five years, which is crazy. I first saw BTS on SNL um, in 2018 and I really, really got more into BTS in 2019. Okay, so let's get into the important things like my bias. My bias is Jungkook. I love that man so much. <laughs> I absolutely adore him, but my bias wrecker is Suga. I love me a rap moment. Um, so both of them are the absolute loves of my life. And then let's touch upon a few of my favorite songs. So I'm definitely more of a basic army bitch. Dope is obviously one of my favorite songs. It's the first song that I ever heard from BTS because it was one of the best performances at SNL. Same with Mic Drop. I really like Mic Drop, but specifically the version with Designer. I also really love Idol on DNA. I don't I think I'm a pretty basic bitch. But my absolute number one favorite song and the song that I will constantly replay is Anpan Man. And I constantly rewatch their Today City music series version of the song, of the performance. I may or may not have bought a pair of loose jeans and a white top in order to feel like I'm in that performance. Then make my dad take a picture to show everybody. Um when I was in a Delulu pandemic phase. So anyways, we're going to end this intro here um, and get into the beginning of two weeks ago when I started this vlog and really fell into my master's thesis of dissection of this book. So enjoy. Hello. So it's finally time. I'm going to be starting BTS Beyond the Story. I cannot express how excited I am to read this book. I've been really putting it off because I just wanted to read it at the perfect time. I know and I've seen a lot of reviews where people were talking about how this has stuff that like older armies know about or like seasoned armies know about. And I would consider myself like semi seasoned. Like I've been a BTS fan for a really long time. Um, I was very, de oh my fridge, God damn it. I was very devoted to BTS for like two years during the pandemic. Um, I've kind of wandered off lately. So I still consider myself ARMY. ARMY is for everyone. Um, I have seven highlighters here. So I think what I'm going to do is just have a highlight for an every individual BTS member. And I'll put like a little legend at the beginning and we'll start, I'm very excited. <laughs> So I just finished the first chapter of Beyond the Story. It was called Soul. I figured the book is divided into seven chapters. So I figured just in talking about every chapter will pretty much give us a well-rounded block. So the first chapter, which you can clearly see I've tabbed and written notes about, um, is basically about all of them coming to Seoul and what they were doing before and during the time that they were set to debut. And I think what's really interesting about this is that all seven of them, while we know were different people, different characters and had different talents, I think it's really explored well in this book because we're getting all of their different perspectives. And it's interesting to see how much Suga RM and J-Hope, who are the oldest of the group besides Jin, shaped the way that the band members thought about debuting, thought about being trainees and thought about their band as a whole and they honestly inspired a lot of the younger members specifically Jungkook and V mention a lot about being inspired by their older 
brothers. So I thought that that was really cool. And it's especially interesting when in contrast to what the members believe they wanted to do in the band, there's a lot of stuff that we like hear here and there about the band members and how they've debuted and started in the band. But I think it's interesting to hear from their own perspective. And they've mentioned it in interviews, off shots and stuff like that. But I think what's really interesting is like, for example, Jin, we all know that Jin was like the handsome chosen member of the band and he speaks about how he was really interested to act and wanted to enter a career as an idol in order to get these opportunities in the industry to act in movies and then he's like well I guess I'm going to debut in this pop band because that's what's going to be the most successful for me at this current state. And what's really, really precious as well is hearing about Jim and V and Jungkook's experiences joining these bands when they were so young and not necessarily taking it seriously because they didn't think that they would be debuting so soon. And Jungkook talks a lot about how he was like not taking it seriously. He kind of wanted to find himself. He was a 15 year old boy. So he was just like, I don't know what I want. Like, and I just think that that's so sweet. So as we move into the next chapter, we're moving into what's called why we exist with a adorable image of their first album, um, Too Cool for School, which I think is so funny. They look so different from like who is that is that jungkook no that's jungkook that's j-hope oh my god but, like they look so different from like what they are today i just think it's so funny i'm definitely going to continue reading i am listening to it on audio but i'm really really enjoying the narration style of the book and while i do want to get into this is probably gonna be the longest clip but i do want to get into how i'm annotating the novel i'm basically highlighting whenever each individual member speaks in the book so that visually I can get a grasp at what section and what they are talking about like from a fast perspective and then I obviously have like my notes this one is specifically about Jack Black and School of Rock which is one of my favorite movies that I did not expect to appear in this book but it did and then just the tabs are really when there's significant quotes to how they were feeling in the moment or how their feelings related to them as a group of seven them as a as a band loving this obviously i don't think it's a surprise and i will come back shortly with the next part i'm going turning keep holding me down yeah it's too many to be turning easy as longer by no. You can never know that. No, no, I don't have it. It runs in a gap. You're lucky when you're not bold. You're more tell. I pay my bills. So I am currently uploading a video um for my Hammer of Thor vlog, which will definitely go up before this one. And I figured might as well be the time to talk about part two or chapter two why we exist in BTS Beyond the Story. So this specific chapter goes through their like school years up until their danger performance at the MAMA and iconic performance, iconic performance if you haven't seen it. But this was around the time that BTS was trying to really prove themselves. So what this chapter is really diving into is honestly how much effort goes into being an idol. I think at this point we all know or are relatively aware of the amount of work kids who are enter entering the idol scene put into being noticed entering the music scene the k-pop scene and it's just extremely interesting to like read it in their own words because you can see how they were tired especially around school love affair how they were tired how much work they were putting into it because they were also at the same time recording vlogs and updating their blog so that they can feel connected to their audience and therefore their audience feels more connected to them. So they're doing quite a bit of work and there's several times where they talk about how every time they've gotten a break, all they did was sleep. This is something they mentioned in interviews as well, something they bring up in the book and how they are being dissed quite a bit by the people in the rap scene. RM has already had two times that he's being attacked or being dissed rather by another rapper. The mama performance is where he decides to like respond and enter sort of this rap game. What's interesting is that the album that Danger comes from, which is Dark and Wild, was not received really well by audiences, by critics. After working so hard to really establish themselves in the genre, it obviously comes at like a really disappointing moment because obviously they want to prove themselves in the genre, prove themselves as the next generation of K-pop and they are constantly being 
pushed down. The mama performance is where they show off Danger, show off the differences in their style from their previous albums to this one. So Dark and Wild is really the centerfold of their schoolboy era. So like Too Cool for School, Oh Are You Late Too, that kind of thing. And then moving into what I think is arguably, I don't know, I have to make this decision, but like arguably one of BTS's greatest albums and one of their like biggest hits which is the most beautiful moment in life so i'm very excited to get into that era i think it's the the next era so chapter three is entitled love hate and army as we are like reading their beginning portions they they have an audience they have fans people are really enjoying them but now i think we're going to get into the level of the impact of army and how much army changed the trajectory of their careers and how they establish themselves. I think what I'm going to do now is just make sure this video is uploading correctly and then I'm going to go back to the yeah <laughs> I'm sorry, I just think this is so funny. Like, you would think I'm studying for, like, a freaking thesis. But no. It's just the PTS book. Hello. Sorry for the lighting in here. The office is a disaster. All of the lights have switched off except for one. Um, and we just haven't changed it yet. And I don't feel like putting my ring light on right now. I just finished chapter three in the BTS book, Love, Hate, and Army. And you can really tell, much like within this book, part of their lives was a changing point for them. Just like in the novel, it's a changing point going forward. So in Love, Hate, and Army, we're really going through the trials and tribulations that the band had in this moment before and after the most beautiful moment in life. So the most beautiful moment in life, I think, is where a lot of their hits come from. Dope, Run, um, I Need You. These are, I think, staples in like, once you learn about BTS, these are the songs that I think capture audiences still till now. What's interesting about this chapter is while they're talking about the most beautiful moment in life, it is kind of shaping a most beautiful moment in their careers. Around the time that they're creating this album, they're getting a lot of hate, a lot of cyberbullying, which I didn't know about. I think that that's really interesting. I'm sure it happens that celebrities get cyberbullied, but I didn't realize that like they would see it. Like just like YouTubers are people, influencers are people, like celebrities are people too. Wild concept, I know. But the fact that they were getting bullied for being successful, I think is like really interesting but obviously jealousy comes from all spaces and they are quoting a lot in this book about how grateful they are for army and how army is what keeps them going because they were going through like a really really difficult time like rm really goes in like when they were making the most beautiful moment in life part two rm is saying like lots of things were happening which overlapped with things like are standing at the time and i think i was trying to hide inside my shell that made me like really sad <laughs> and honestly like sugar has been saying some things in this chapter that I'm like, my son, I'm concerned. He says like, at the time, I wasn't really sure why people listened to our music. I couldn't know whether it was because the songs were well made or because the people listening understood the meaning contained in our songs and related to them. But I think I understand now. So they really, really dive into how ARMY allowed them to be able to express themselves and they felt like they had a safe space to really talk about the issues that they were experiencing at the time. And I think that through reading this book, I'm really understanding what made BTS stand out at the time. The first chapter really dives into the fact that they are in a smaller company and how the success of the band, not that it wasn't possible, but they were in for a long shot kind of thing. And I'm really understanding through this book that what made BTS so different from other bands at the time was that they were the almost one of the first to be vocal and be relatable with their fans and, and speak directly to their fans and be able to also express what they were going through emotionally as well. And they were always open and honest about the difficulties that they were experiencing and it's within their songs and they're really talking about the struggles that they've had debuting, the cyberbullying, stuff like that. And I think that that's particularly what makes them stand out. There's another section in the book where it's talking about how BTS was also coming at a time of a new generation. So 
a lot of what made them successful is that they're appealing to the youth and appealing to this youthful generation that is coming in at a time where internet is very popular where distancing yourself from your parents especially in korea distancing distancing yourself from this older generation was crucial at the time and also classism is happening with the rise of capitalism but specifically in korea and like it says here the gap between the rich and the poor in korea had become even more pronounced and people would find themselves pushed out amid a fierce competitiveness in which the phrase every person for themselves could be commonly heard they're coming at a time where they need to inspire people where they need to connect with people where they need to prove that the youth can be different from the generation before them so i think that all of these things around the time of the most beautiful moment in life are intersect intersecting with their feelings of making that album and i just think that this was like such a fascinating chapter to really think about i think how this made bts rise at the rate that they have from that specific album series now the next chapter we're moving into inside out i have no idea what this chapter would be honestly it kind of reminds me of the disney pixar film <laughs> So in this album, they're probably going to discuss Wings, which has Blood, Sweat and Tears, First Love. Um, so I think that this is going to be a really, really interesting section. And I just saw that it starts with the dumpling incident. And if you know anything about BTS, you know about the dumpling incident. I am just really loving this experience. I want to acknowledge that like, I understand that this is put out by hype and that there is a bias to the book. They're not going to really dive into like the hardships of being a K-pop idol, but I think they kind of are at to the best of their capabilities. Like in this book, it's nothing that BTS has never said before. Um, and they've always been sort of open and honest about like the trials and tribulations. So even though I can acknowledge capitalistic sense, Hype is putting this out to like make money off of us and like it's written by a music reviewer and like there's a lot of like capitalistic needs in this book, but I still think that BTS is the most honest and open that they could be through presenting this novel. So I want to acknowledge that, but I also like kind of still love it anyways. I'm just a fan of capitalism, I guess, especially when it comes to BTS. So see you later. I just finished chapter four, Inside Out. This chapter was quite depressing, but in an interesting sense, I guess. The band really goes into kind of like dark feelings they were having, um, insecurities especially. I think what's really interesting is that Suga really dives deep into how he was feeling. And it's quite sad to read, especially in contrast to how the other members were feeling like rm jin goes into a lengthy discussion about how it felt to write a song for the first time produce a song for the first time and i think it's just really progressive that bts as a band was talking about all these moments these disagreements they had with each other these depressing times that they feel they're they're willing to share this and i understand at the same time that it is a tactic like they do talk about how part of hybe's like marketing strategy was to make them as authentic as possible and to get into these discussions and showcase how the members are like arguing with each other and this and that so i acknowledge that this is probably part of that marketing strategy to make bts more relatable i can't say it doesn't work like, I feel very related to the members and knowing that they are relatively the same age as me, especially Jin, RM, and Suga, and knowing that they went through very similar feelings of, are they doing the right career? Are they feeling like they're doing something meaningful in life? And I think that those are very real late 20s to early 30s thoughts. So I really appreciated that. I appreciate they, they dive into that, into the book. They also, once again, talk about how they're growing with army and specifically in this chapter while i don't think this is the breakthrough moment in the united states or the american market they definitely touch upon how they are slowly starting to reach the american market and this is where we're going to see the surplus of growth that bts experiences probably within the next chapters they talk about how army is just helping them through this process as they are feeling depressed as they are trying to hit number one be the number one artist and then maintain that depth and reach to their audiences. Now we are moving into Flight That Never Lands and we're going into the Love Yourself albums 
arguably some of the best photos ever taken of the band. This is where Jungkook has his purple hair that I absolutely adore. It seems to be quite a lengthy chapter. How many pages is this? 60 pages for this chapter, which is super interesting. I can't wait to dive in. Love Yourself is one of my favorite albums and the album that made me discover BTS. I think with a lot of people, it's around the time that they had their SNL debut on Saturday Night Live. So I think that we're getting into the moments that I know about. So I'm very excited to like, I don't know, not be a part of this chapter because they're not mentioning me personally, but knowing that this is where I got into BTS is very exciting to read. Hello. So I just got a microphone. Hello. Do you hear me? I hope it works um, properly because I really want to kind of, I want to invest in my content. And if this works, we're getting more shots than just this room, baby, because I avoid the kitchen like a plague my fridge is the loudest thing in the world and it just makes me so sad that I can't like record in other areas of my house unless my fridge is being silent for the 10 minutes a day that it is and if I miss that 10 minutes it's um it's just a joyous occasion it's cheering it's cheering itself on I actually listened while I was working to the rest of chapter 5 today while I do consider myself army in a sense um i don't really feel like i know a lot about the things that they struggled in the beginnings of their career so this chapter really dives into love yourself which is the first album that i listened to the the collected one tier or answer i'm the worst <laughs> and what they discuss in this book is really interesting because they talk a lot about how they resorted to drinking alcohol and i understand that this book has been like kind of stamped of approval by hype or big hit entertainment right so they're not going to necessarily talk about alcoholism in a sense that i think they should sugar mentions a lot in the book how he he was like drinking and he would come up with a song jungkook and jimin tell a story about when they connected over drinking alcohol when they were struggling to decide whether or not they should like sign a new contract basically in this book the band is really talking about how they had to re-sign their contracts because it seems to be that every seven years the contract would have been up kind of thing and i remember this happening in the news <laughs> i think it was like the beginning probably of when i started watching like bts stuff or reading bts news or getting it on my feed my algorithm around that time on twitter and i just remember like not thinking anything of it but it seems like in this book it was a really change big changing point for the boys because they weren't sure if they wanted to resign they were struggling with their belief in the band not the band necessarily not the other members but what they could create as artists i think a really interesting portion of the chapter is when they dive into the meeting of an idol the song idol coming out and them talking about how like being an idol isn't necessarily a bad thing they talk a lot about how in k-pop idols leave idolhood kind of thing and they become artists and that's when you've like grown and evolved and you're a better singer or, or artist than an idol and they kind of recaptured the the term idol which i thought was really good i rewatched the idol performance with uh, jimmy fallon that was one of the first performances i've watched of bts and i absolutely love that performance i i watched it i used to watch it quite frequently like at least once a day now i haven't watched it in a while and that's something i did want to bring up i find this book is making me recapture my love of bts ever since they've kind of toned down this year they're taking a break due to the fact that a lot of them have to do their army contracts in south korea i haven't been like really following bts um i didn't even like know jungkook had put out any other new songs besides seven and today i watched and listened to the all the whole golden album it's been like really nice to to recapture my love for bts but back to their mental health <laughs> um you could tell that they were really struggling struggling in this book and they're saying it in so few many words they talk about how they've leaned on each other leaned on army and that's what led them to create the love yourself albums go on tour do all these press conferences in the u.s and rekindle i think their love of being an idol so now we're going to move into chapter six and this seems to be revolving around map of the soul persona which is the first album i ever bought of bts and i still have it somewhere in this house because i still haven't unpacked since moving out from my parents house i'm going to continue working probably go to the gym later during lunch and then fill you in whenever i finish the next chapter the goodreads choice awards have been put up and bts is nominated in biography or memoir autobiography and i find that fascinating and i wonder how army is reacting to this we gotta go on x slash twitter we gotta find out <laughs> Talk 
Hello, so I just got back from watching Priscilla, which was directed by my queen, Sofia Coppola. Jacob Elordi was in it. Oh, it was a really good movie. Um, I think if you're not too used to Sofia Coppola's directing style, you might not like it as much. I was went with um, one of my friends and she's not well versed in Sofia Coppola. And I think it is very specific to her directorial style. It felt quite choppy at times because we're really just going through Priscilla's life and Priscilla's life from what I understand, was quite boring because she spent so much time at Graceland. Not by choice, I don't think. Was Jacob Elordi hot? Yes. Was he scary? Yes. Am I used to it because of Nick Jacobs? Yes. Is it an excuse? No. I just love Jacob Elordi. I don't know what to tell you. But since I got home, I did finish chapter six called The World of BTS. I was very excited for this chapter, as I told you guys before, because this is the chapter where, like, not to make it about me, but, like, where I come in <laughs> into the my BTS um, loving army and stuff like that and i think that this chapter was the most like not serious but very corporate sounding chapter because we're i think getting into a time that bts was not i don't think less open because they definitely are really discussing like their depression and adjusting to this grandiose new lifestyle because they're touching way more people and they're achieving so much more than i think they ever really thought so this struggle of being an idol being a celebrity and then being a, a person and they talk a lot about being a person and this duality of themselves as artists and as people obviously leaning into the title of map of the soul persona so they're really talking about these different personas that they have they all kind of see themselves as artists see themselves as doing music as their careers and being idols as their careers and then struggling with the fact that while they do like enjoy doing music and they enjoy dancing and they enjoy performing that becomes their like on stage persona and so the chapter is really diving into how they had to kind of find themselves outside of being idols and outside of being these performers in order to feel closer to themselves or like go back to the way that they felt previously to debuting which i think is a really interesting discussion to have and, and a discussion that i think a lot of celebrities attest to or or acknowledge when they're like really talking about their successes but i also think that it's a sad discussion because they really feel as though they didn't know who they were especially for jimin v and jungkook who are the youngest and were quite young when they debuted they had to kind of find themselves again after they've grown into these major celebrities like for example jungkook was talking about how like jungkook the singer's time and jungkook the individual's time were just not in sync but i don't think there was anything i could do no one can live exactly as they want but instead they might find a different kind of happiness in some other aspect i think you have to endure and live through something like that if you want to step up to the next level so they're talking a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot about that and then we move into map of the soul 7 and the introduction of black swan and then this skyrocketing kind of their careers um because this is where they performed on performed black swan these more grandiose in terms of structure in terms of dynamic of dancing and singing and performing together on a larger scale than than they were used to and now we're moving into the b album which is i think one of my favorites it also contains like one of my favorite photos i just think like hello look at jungkook oh my gosh <sighs> i'm just like staring it is the last chapter in the book and then i will be done i've treated this like it's a master's thesis so i am excited to be finished this i'm i don't want to finish this i really refound a love of bts throughout this vlog and throughout reading this book so i will finish this probably tonight i think i'm just gonna read the last chapter update you and then this vlog will be done hello i am currently on the couch just having finished ow <laughs> beyond the story i'm emotional i'm grateful i'm honored to have read this story i'm tired and i want to go to bed so i will give you my full thoughts on the final chapter and my thoughts overall of this book this insane tabbing that i've done tomorrow or maybe the day after see ya so welcome to the end of the vlog i feel like i didn't address that my microphone is now a scissor and i just don't want 
people to talk about it okay welcome to the end of the vlog we will now talk about the final chapter which was we are that was chapter seven and my overall thoughts on the book and i feel like the two are sort of interrelated briefly i'll talk about the last chapter i really feel like the personality and charm that the rest of the book had was really lost in the last chapter um it's something i will talk about in my review but i just feel like the fact that this was written by a music journalist really showed within the last chapter there was a lot of comments from weverse magazine and not directly to our author or what i assumed was directly spoken to our author while he was writing this book and it just felt out of touch i really felt like it didn't feel as personal that last chapter and obviously the last chapter is talking about like where they go from here life after the pandemic and coming back from the pandemic i just really feel like it wasn't as sentimental to me um or didn't feel as personal to me so with that let's get into my overall review of the book i'm gonna put this down because it's kind of heavy in my heart of hearts this was very obviously a five star read but technically it isn't as you guys saw throughout this vlog it definitely rejuvenated my love for bts which i feel like has been on the dl lately and it made me so happy in these last few dreary months of the year for me i really 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 enjoyed learning a lot about the early days of bts since i didn't really know much about what happened and like what they endured so that being said i think if you have been an army for a really long time or know a lot about their early days i am not too sure if anything in this book will come as a, like a surprise to you or like interesting information or or information that you've never seen before and additionally i think i mentioned this also in the vlog we have to acknowledge that this was put out by hybe and weverse magazine so they definitely have like goals and expectations of what is presented in this book and how they are being presented i do feel like it did expose quite more than i thought it would specifically about their struggles and difficulties with in the idol system in korea but again it was nothing that bts didn't really talk about from what i understand early on in their careers they were kind of encouraged to do so in the beginning so a lot of what was said and what was exposed was already kind of like maybe not pre-approved but definitely something that they were allowed to do in the past and herein lies as i mentioned the biggest problem i think i have with the book so i found these beginning portions to be the most interesting and the most meaningful in regards to the biography and the quotes from the members of the band but the last two chapters really felt more like reporting and less reflection from the band looking past this made the clunkiness of the overall novel i think shine a bit more and without the quotes looking back on these moments it really just felt like i was reading an article in the last two chapters about things that i already knew about the band so overall i think i'm going to give this a four stars i also have one last qualm it's not as serious there was not enough jk quotes in this book at all however there was enough sugar quotes to satisfy me i just feel like if there was a little bit more jungkook reflection maybe I would have like given it a higher rating. I don't know. I don't know. That's it. Those are my thoughts on BTS Beyond the Story. Please let me know down below if you are army. If you have read this book, did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you feel like it offered anything new? Who is your bias? Who is your bias wrecker? what is your favorite song i need to know if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias i do leave a link down below to my twitter i guess it's x goodreads and instagram if you would like to follow me there and of course because it is the end of the video please do not forget to like subscribe and ring the notification bell it does wonders for my channel it makes me feel really good and that's it i hope you enjoyed this i'm your hope you're my hope i don't know how to end these things so i will see you next time okay bye